Good afternoon. Welcome to the May 26th meeting of Hardin County Fiscal Court. I'd remind you if you have cell phones to so please turn them off or put them in vibrate mode. We'll begin with the roll call if you would, Ms. Donnelly. Easter. Here. Doug Goodman. Here. Boone. Here. Clem. Here. Wiseman. Here. Thompson. Here. Ronnie Goodman. Here. King. Here. Judge Berry. Here. Mr. Thompson will lead us in invocation and Mr. Wiseman in the pledge, if you'll please stand. I invite you to pray with me. Father God, uh, we're, we're mindful of your presence constantly. Uh, we praise you and thank you for that. Lord, uh, during uh, these times of uh, trial for us, uh, we, we just uh, praise you that you are present and that you're aware of our needs. Father, you've blessed us in times of plenty and in times of challenge. Lord, uh, even in these times when uh, things uh, often appear to be bad, you're there and you're providing all we need and more. We thank you, Father, that we live in this country where we still can call upon your name publicly and that uh, we are blessed with your presence. Uh, we pray, Father, that today as we can to consider your business, that. Uh, uh, for this county that you would guide our thinking, uh, cause us to uh, be aware of the best things that we can do to serve here in this county. Um, bless us as we move forward in this meeting. Bless all who are gathered here and all who serve in this area. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with uh, Department uh, and Elected Office reports today with Mr. Jimmy Armstrong first, EMS. Good afternoon, Judge Berry, members of Fiscal Court. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm here to present to you my April 2019-2020 report. As you see in front of you, um, Revenue was down, and I'll expand on that toward the latter end of my report. Um, for fiscal year 2018-19, for the month of April, we made $420,000 and $420,225. Uh, this fiscal year in April, we brought in $351,891. Next slide, please. So billable versus non-billable runs uh, for the month of April, uh, we had a total number of runs of 1,054. Of those runs, 784 were billable and 270 were non-billable. So at the end of April for the fiscal year to date, total number of runs that we made were 13,462. And of those, 10,810 were billable and 2,652 were non-billable calls. Next slide, please. So a summary um, for fiscal year to date through the month of April, 2019-20 fiscal year, the total mileage driven so far is 393,205 miles. Of those from the previous slide, as you saw, 13,462 calls uh, through the month end of April for fiscal year to date. Of those, the non-billable were 2,652 and the billable were 10,810. Uh, total collected was 4,039,754.05. Uh, of course, the uh, grant we get each fiscal year through KBEAMS, 10,000. Our total expenditures uh, through the month of April for fiscal year to date was $4,663,132.38, which gives you a net negative, a net negative of $613,378.33. Next slide, please. So to give you a, a little bit of a summary as to why um, revenue is down in the last month or so. Um, April 2019 versus 2020, the run volume. Uh, for the month of April, uh, this fiscal year, as you saw, uh, we made 1,054 calls. However, in April of 2019, we made 1,370. And if uh, for fiscal year to date through the month of April, um, we are down 714 calls. <coughs> Um, that doesn't seem like a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. However, if you average that out, um, we average roughly $300 per call, and that's over $200,000 worth of potentially lost revenue. Um, so that would you know, definitely bring down our red number. 
Um, in addition to, we're going to see, unfortunately, over the next two to three months, decrease in revenue as well um, because volume is still down. Um, I don't. It's picked up some. However, it's nowhere near it was back in January and February of this of this year. Um, but it will kick back up as the economy opens up and our volume will go up. So, um, retirement, uh, end of June, June 30th is my last uh, day of work. First day of retirement is one July of this year. Um, it's been a great opportunity for me to work almost 21 years with county government and working with uh, Judge Barry, working with Mr. London, and working with Bryce Shoemate um, directly, all and working with fiscal court. Um, each one along that, Bryce and Daniel and the judge and fiscal court has worked with me and allowed me the opportunity to expand some of our services and do some different things and think outside or inside the box um, and make things better here in Hardin County for the citizens as far as their EMS service. And I appreciate all the, the, uh, the help along the way and all the, the guidance from all, all the uh, Judge Barry and Daniel and Bryce. So. And your cooperation as well with some of the things that I've worked on in the past three years. So I appreciate every every one of you. Thank you. Any questions? Questions or comments? Just Thank appreciate you, you Jamie. I'm going to miss you. You've done a great job. Thank you. County owes you a, a great a, a deal of uh, gratitude. It's uh, you know whenever I first started, we had. Uh, three stations and four ambulances and uh, one ambulance was a day truck and you know now we're um, multiple ambulances you know our volumes went up almost double you know whenever I started we were making six or seven thousand calls in 1999 and uh, medicine has come a long way county government's come a long way and um, our um, cooperation and working together has come a long way especially in the last three years and um, you know we've been able to get a lot accomplished so and it's all because of of Bryce and Daniel and Judge Barry and the Masters here, and we appreciate you as well. So. Well, we appreciate the great job you've done in your leadership and the, uh, the initiatives that you've brought to improve the service. Uh, you've done a great job for us on behalf of all the citizens. We congratulate you and wish you the best in your new endeavors. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be Mr. Mike Leo, E911. Good afternoon, Judge Barry, member of the Physical Court. Good afternoon. I'm here to present the April activity report for the 911 center. <clears throat> uh, 911 calls answered for the month of April is 4,044. Created 6,612 CAD reports. Answered 3,337 administrative calls. Uh, dispatched 1,066 EMS runs. Uh, dispatched 313 fire runs and handled 877 attempt to serve prison transports and traffic stop type calls. Just a breakdown of calls of service by agency, uh, EMS with 58.9%, uh, Sheriff's Office with 19.3%, and then you see the rest of the agencies we dispatched for and their percentages. Next slide. Break down the fire department, uh, fire runs by fire department. Obviously, Utah and Radcliffe obviously seem to be the majority uh, just because of their incorporated areas. Uh, Etown with 31.3%, uh, Radcliffe with 25.6%. And you can see the rest of the fire departments there. <coughs> Calls transferred to uh, the secondary law enforcement dispatch centers here in Arden. Total calls transferred is 1,032, <coughs> 317 to Radcliffe Police. 300, correction, 514 to E-Town Police, and 201 to the Kentucky State Police. That'll conclude the activity report for the month of April. Do you have any questions for me? Comments for Mike? Thanks, appreciate it, good job. Thank you. And the Hardin County Detention Center report, Jailer Josh Limbaugh. Well, it's been an interesting time at the Hardin County Jail. I mean, as you can see, but everybody's been working together pretty well and taking care of business pretty well. As of today, we still do not have any cases of uh, COVID-19 in the jail. Knock on wood, we should keep it that way. Uh, a couple of jails around here have, but uh, the jailers are such work pretty hard together to uh, keep everything moving, you know, at a pace where we can keep everybody quarantined and uh, do different things. Of course, our 
population dropped from about 815 down to 575s. You know, it's 573 this morning, so uh, that's something to think about. But uh, of course, uh, the county attorney's office has been working with us. I don't think I've called, you know, Mrs. Oldham uh, every day. 10 o'clock at night. Uh, <laughs> you know, we don't talk about every day and stuff, something's wrong. So I uh, hope Dennis don't get mad. <laughs> There's plenty of us. Uh, if you look at the lodging income, of course, you know, we dropped uh, 24 state prisoners. So that was it. I mean, that wasn't uh, a big hit to us. So that was people that was, you know, going to be getting out in the next few months anyway. And uh, a couple people that they thought might be a little medically fragile. So we didn't get as big of a hit as some. Some jails across the state have actually been laying people off. And uh, it's, uh, they made their budget that tight for to do that stuff. You know, of course, we like to work at our budget to make sure we have enough money in the budget to keep everything flowing right. And so it, it, it worked out well, I mean, so far. So uh, once this all opens back up, of course, we'll get priority since we are one of the largest facilities in the state. So, but we really haven't dropped much. And as you can see, of course, our state prisoners actually, you know, we have a lot more state prisoners in the county now. So that's a first time in years. Our population is lower than it was 15 and a half years when I left to go to the sheriff's office. So that's something to think about. Of course, you know, our numbers keep dropping, so. Um, lately, we haven't been getting a lot of ch the charges we've got. Uh, it's been real, um, it's different. I mean, it's different times, you know. Right now with Judge Minton's orders, uh, Chief Justice Minton's orders that when somebody comes in on different cases, they can be released quicker than having pre-trial release and everything else. So it's, it's a whole new frontier for everybody. Uh, it's like it was maybe 20 years ago. So different crimes and stuff that come in and stuff, you know, violations and stuff, you know, whenever they get to run over certain things and stuff, we're able to get them out of jail a little bit quicker. Not, not, I'm not talking about murders and all that stuff, I'm talking about you know, uh, we call about checks, we call about different things like that stuff, you know. But yeah, it's uh, getting through and, and cycling through a whole lot quicker. So, now you look at the charge information. I mean, operating influence is, is still high. Assault fourth degree is getting even worse. You know, people are cooped up in the house. And uh, I hope and pray people don't, you know, sit at the house, you know, and, you know, are violent to each other. But, you know, as everybody's cooped up and stuff, it's gone up a little bit, you know. Uh, possession of marijuana, it's always going to stay right in the middle there. But uh, the violation of EPO and DVO is actually down. Uh, it's down by about uh, six from last time. Uh, non payment of fines, there's 11 people arrested. Of course, those people non payment of fines, they're released pretty quick. I'm going to talk about within 15 minutes. Uh, we get another court date for their fines to be collected. So at least it's not count it cost the county money to house them while they're in. Uh, they're coming in, getting right back out. and <coughs> reason being is because we just assume, you know, not charge somebody, yeah, I mean, have to pay for them $35 dollars a day or medical fees and everything and stuff for a $100 fine. So it's going to work out stuff eventually and stuff. Now the courthouse opened back up, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be slam packed with people with fines. Uh, of course, step by deception, cold checks is three. That's, you know, uh, really the, the the stuff isn't an issue as much because, like I said, everybody's working together trying to keep people out of jail right now and <coughs> keep a population of jail safe. Uh, shoplifting, six. That's really down. You know, that's really good. Uh, felony charges, you know, Burley first, second, third, eight. Robbery, first, second, four. Assault first, second, third, nine. That's one of the numbers that have gone up. And if you've seen the newspaper lately, of course, a lot of the crimes that have been arrested on has been more major crimes lately. So, uh, you know, just go to show you and stuff when you're, you know, focusing the whole picture and not a lot of people out and stuff. The people that, you know, some of the people that are out are out do no good. So that's something to keep an eye on. We haven't had any uh, weekenders. Uh, we decided, you know, first off, the Park Corrections and the Jailers Association that we hold off on the weekenders because having people brought in, you know, 30, 40 at a time, introducing the facility at one time. Uh, we used to have to split them up between different pods. You know, right now, so we don't have a place to do it. So we uh, just assume not having them there and stuff so we can keep everybody separated. You know, right now we're starting even having uh, in-person visits and such for keeping people out of the jail. So it's, uh, so far it's worked. So I'm pretty happy with that. Ah, our inmate hours have always been really uh, uh, excited about. 
it's dropped down a good bit. You know, with the kitchen staff working, cleaning crews working inside the jail and everything. Of course, you know, we uh, uh, there for those months, the two months straight stuff. We were out actually, you know, myself and Coach Debbie's right there mowing and doing different things. So to keep the uh, properties that we do keep, of all 47 of them, keep it up. Uh, we also had help from uh, uh, Buildings and Grounds and Saw the waste that, uh, you know, since people over and they were out mowing and everything too, so the inmates weren't able to go out and mow. But if you look at the hours, so the hours are down a good bit. So we will get those back up. Of course, you know, there wasn't any trash crews, that's where we weren't able to pick up trash. But now we did go out, if somebody didn't call and say, hey, somebody dumped a bunch of stuff, we did go out, a couple of the deputies going out and have cleaned up myself to cover and clear it. So uh, if you look at the medical runs, outside of Punch, down to 11. That's unheard of. Uh, emergency room visits from five. Uh, nurses calls inside usually run about 1,200, 1,300, 768. Uh, medical rush down 158. Inmates on medication down to 286. That's the lowest it's been in 10 years. I uh, usually average about 370 to 400 people on meds of, of some sort, you know. But. Uh, we have got a new body scanner. Of course, I believe it's on the agenda for today for uh, the rules on that. And we've uh, sent all the rules in and uh, the new policy change and stuff you ought to look at here. Uh, we've done a lot of interesting things. I know uh, uh, Director Armstrong had talked about uh, thinking outside the box a little bit more for EMS. Well, we come down, we talk, myself, uh, Director Armstrong, uh, Merge Managing Director, Ryan Schumann. Uh, we all met together and stuff and looked over different plans to try to get an ambulance stationary on that in the town. <coughs> uh, one of the problems you've been having is the ambulances or the uh, trains getting stopped up on East Dixie. Uh, you're getting a lot more traffic, construction traffic on the end of the bypass and the school opens up and when the school opens up then there's going to be very uh, hard to get through uh, making response times that end of the county a little hard. We've gone through, we looked over all the different options, and we found a spot in the jail, the old juvenile section in the front there, that was just used for storage. We cleaned it out, remodeled it. Uh, the whole total remodel on it cost 720 bucks. It now has two bedrooms and a kitchen <laughs> and a living room area and a bay for the ambulance. So it cost the county that much, you know, let's say that much money. And now the 22 runs I think we had with Valley Creek on that end on medical rooms, the response time was cut down by half. So that's pretty uh, impressive on its own, and it uh, didn't cost eight million or so for a new station down there. So it really worked out well. Uh, they were very instrumental in that. We've uh, gone through, and, and I will tell you this: I got to give kudos. My chief deputy actually came with the idea, you know, to that side because we were thinking about adding on or, you know, look at all the options. He said, "Why don't we use that spot?" I was like, "That's the smartest thing I've heard in a long time." <laughs> but. Um, one of the medical runs that was happening the other day and stuff was a choking victim and it was a four minute response time. So that's unheard of. And that's been the average now. The average runs about four to four and a half minutes right now instead of living in the county. So that is a big plus for not only the jail, even though we have full time medical, now we have an EMS on standby right there, but also that into the county. So now the county and stuff is a whole lot safer just because of that. And uh, I appreciate everything y'all did working together with that stuff and it's uh, really took a long way well. <coughs> Any questions on anything? Any comments? Good thank report. You for your What's that? Good report. Well, thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of good news. Thank you. For, thank you all for getting together. I can't hear you, Bill. What you say? Hey, it might be better. <laughs> thank you for your report. Uh, you. All right. We'll move on to item three, which is ordinances, agreements, and resolutions. Uh, first up is item 3A. It's second reading and adoption of ordinance number 318 4, series 2019. It's amending the 1920 budget. It's amendment number four. We did have uh, first reading uh, at our last meeting. Is there any? Moved to approve. Motion by Mr. Clem, second by Mr. Thompson to approve. Any discussion? Hearing that, Ms. Dolly. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boone? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Item 3B is first reading of ordinance number 323, series 2020. 
It's an updated comprehensive ordinance related to the mandatory storage collection processing, <coughs> transportation, and disposal of solid waste. Uh, this is an ordinance that was put in place first about 18 years ago. Uh, this update incorporates all the previous amendments over those years uh, that we've made to the document and helps clarify uh, some of the services, fees, and exemptions. Uh, is there any, would you like to make a motion to consider it and we can discuss if anybody would like. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Wiseman. Second. Second by Mr. Clem. Any discussion? Questions or concerns? Anybody's got any questions? Daniel's ready to answer them. He's put it together. And I just want to thank him for all the work he went through doing it. Thank you, Daniel. Judge, uh, <clears throat> I've had questions about clarification on the storage container requirement or Section 3. And I don't know, Mr. London, if you want to go over that or if it needs more ex explanation maybe on camera for folks to better understand that. As the ordinance currently stands, it, it refers to approved containers. Uh, approved containers, as you can imagine, basically means anything with uh, handles on it. We have, unfortunately, some customers that are using barrels, other things that uh, don't work very well. Uh, 18 years ago, that worked uh, okay, uh, but today we have different technology, obviously, that uh, keeps down costs, uh, such as uh, lifts on the uh, garbage trucks that uh, can handle uh, larger containers. So we're going to a 96-gallon tote. Uh, we currently have those that are available for rent uh, with uh, Red River. This ordinance allows us to move to uh, mandatory usage of those containers versus having to purchase your own or using just uh, basically whatever is what we have uh, have seen uh, that's going to lead to a decrease in cost uh, we bid uh, bid the franchise uh, hauler contract a few weeks ago we saw an increase in cost based upon this old ordinance <coughs> by going through and updating and um, uh, getting to the point where we can clean this up some we've actually decreased cost a, a couple of dollars per customer uh, in one case, with one bid, about $9 uh, a customer. So uh, by doing this, we, that keeps down the cost of workers' comp for uh, the uh, solid waste hauler. Um, each customer will get uh, two containers free of charge. Right now, we have 30% of our customers who use a container. Uh, that costs $2 for the first one, $6 for the second one. That's going to result in 30% of customers actually having a savings now on their bill of approximately $1.25 uh, per month uh, because these two totes, the containers, will be free of charge and provided to them. So, do I understand that those people who already have containers and are renting those containers, saying it under the bill, that will be stopped or will not be a charge? That is correct. In the so currently they're paying $2 for their first one, $6 for their second one. So once we get uh, this ordinance passed uh, with the cleanup and then the contract, new contract with Red River, those charges will go away and they'll be provided with two for free of charge. Now you and I have had discussions on two or three different occasions yes, as a result of, of, of this. Um, my understanding is, if I'm clear, that those items which are too big for one man to place onto the truck. If the customer will contact Red River at some time during that is it week or month, sure. Red River will have some vehicle come by there and take that larger item. Yes, is that correct? So as it stands uh, right now, if you put it out, Red River will take it. Now, I want to clarify the, the ordinance again, as it stands today, doesn't provide for that. Um, it is required for residents to put um, all their waste, whether it be, uh, except for certain bulky items, into containers. But Red River has just, as a service, picked that up. Uh, what we are going to in the future will be a call-in based bulk service pickup. So if I want to put out a mattress, if I call them a few days, and, and we'll put out that deadline, we're, we're still working on that a little bit, but if they'll call a few days before their scheduled pickup, they will make every effort to pick it up on their regular scheduled day that they place it out. They just need warning uh, so that that can be done. They will be allowed to do that one time per month. 
So if you have a couple mattress or mattresses or you're going to uh, do some renovation, which we, we've seen with people being cooped up, if you'll call Red River uh, ahead of time, again, once we get this contract in place, then they will make every effort to do it on your normal scheduled day, which is actually going to be a better service than what they have now. Now, yard debris, uh, I'm, I'm glad to collect leaves and put them in the black plastic bags and tie the black plastic black bags and set them out. And I may have five or six bags out there from time to time. What are the provisions as far as that's concerned in sure. the future? Um, we haven't finalized the contract yet with uh, Red River. We expect to do that within the next couple weeks. Obviously, it's contingent upon uh, this ordinance uh, passing. Uh, but as we are discussing right now, uh, grass clippings will be separate from the requirement to put in bins. So you'll get up to four, uh, again, what we're discussing at this point, up to four 50-pound bags of uh, uh, grass clippings that you can put outside of the can. Then your debris, as far as limbs, uh, shrubs, and so on, um, cut it three foot, three foot sections, bundle it, and there's no limit on that as long as they place it at curbside. Any other questions while I'm up here? Just important to note that everybody needs to be aware that everything needs to be placed inside the containers. The yeah. <clears throat> we've kind of gotten a, gotten by with putting four or five bags of garbage when we fill our cans up. And they have done that out of the goodness of their heart, basically. They, they and that's not part of the ordinance. They need to put it inside the containers. And, and we're having issues, too, when, uh, when that's done. Obviously, animals getting into the trash, scattering it, and it becoming, uh, becoming yep. a problem. And, and, and I understand it from a cost perspective. If you're having to pay for those cans, you know, I, we're all trying to save money. And that's part of the reason we negotiated this uh, deal. We got the cost down. Uh, we're containing costs. And now you've got uh, the two... Uh, Two totes, 97, uh, 96 gallon totes uh, for free of charge. So we're providing that incentive for you to do that. And then again, it saves, saves costs, whether it be workers' comp and uh, time and time and wages. In most cases, two totes are going to solve the problem. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. That, that's a lot of that's a lot of trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what has Red River done, or what have we done, to advertise to our customers in an unincorporated part of the county? Uh, what the rules are going to be once this becomes a day? Uh, not anything yet, uh, because the contract's not, not final. But as part of the contract, like we've had in the past, <coughs> Red River is required to conduct a public education uh, campaign. And part of that will be, and I know they've already contacted radio stations and newspaper to get uh, the cost of ads, so they're going to use that. Uh, they're also going to use mailers. Um, and in form of, and the mailers will be as part of uh, uh, the hard and billing service bills that go out on a monthly basis. So they'll be accompanying the bills. And then they'll also do um, a flyer at each residence that they pick up to ensure that we get word out. And then obviously we as Hardin County government will advertise using social media and uh, our webpage. And Red River will do the same. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone yeah. else with thoughts, comments, questions? Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> if not, then, Ms. Donnelly? Okay. Boone? Yes. Clam? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. All right. Item 3C is on number 2020 078. It's approving Tetra Tech work orders number 32 and 33, and amendment number four to their professional services agreement with us, extending the contract to June 30th, uh, 2021. Uh, those were included in your packet. It's uh, the routine quality control, environmental oversight uh, that we have them do for us and regulatory support. Moved to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Clem, second by Ms. Boone. Any discussion? Are you hearing none, Ms. Donnelly? Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Finn? Yes. And I'm item 3D is resolution 2020-081. Uh, it's approving Kelwell Food Management contract uh, for the meal service at the detention center. Uh, this is renewing their contract at the same rates 
uh, that we had the previous year to be able to keep the guests at Mr. Limbaum's hotel uh, fed. <laughs> second. Motion by Mr. King, second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? I'd rather not go out there and eat at his place, if he didn't mind. I'll tell you what, that's, that's been a good contract for us. Yes, sir. It has. Uh, I don't know where else we can get this that's cheap. Certainly not cheaper, I would think. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently we'll do a pretty good job. We don't hear too much about it one way or the other. 12, 13 years ago, it used to be done in-house. and This was quite a savings when we switched to it. Mm -hmm. Gary, on that point, Judge, if you don't mind me pointing out something, Warren, Warren County's paying about $1.25. Yeah. So that puts it in perspective. With 400 less calories. Say again? With 400 less calories per day, bring me. So we're getting more for less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there's no one else, Ms. Donnelly? Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boone? Yes. Clem? Yes. And item uh, four is the consent agenda that was included in your electronic packet. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Doug Goodman, second by Mr. Clem. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Holly. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boone? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Uh, we'll start around the table today with Mr. Clem. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Debbie, I've had <clears throat> several calls from folks wanting a better explanation as to the primary voting. I know you beat this horse to death, but could you explain that one more time, how, how the voting will go in the primary? All voting for the primary is by absentee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can, the portal is now open on the Secretary of State's site. You can go to um, govoteky.com and then click on absentee ballot request. And then uh, that'll take you through the questions that you have to answer. and then they will push that down to us for us to automatically mail out a ballot. Or if you don't have a computer, then you can call us at 270-765-6762 and we will uh, do that for you or get the ballot uh, mailed to you. But it is all absentee voting and I've had questions. They're getting confused thinking that you're actually voting online and I said, no, you're not voting online, you're receiving a ballot. What you're doing online is the portal if you choose to do so. And they can bring their ballot to the courthouse as well if they want to. If they want to, they, they can. We'll have two drop boxes and they can drop it in the drop box. Now, uh, each person will, that requests a ballot will receive a prepaid envelope to mail their ballot back in. So they will not be out that uh, postage. And just to be clear, everybody has to request a ballot. Everyone has to request, and I'm glad you said that because uh, there's confusion also thinking that we're automatically mailing out every registered voter a ballot. That's not the case. You have to actually request the ballot. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What is the deadline on that to request it? If you want a mail ballot, that's June the 15th. Debbie, I've had some questions. So will there be early voting here at the clerk's office? Well, there will be starting June the 1st, next Monday. Uh, they can uh, pull up out here and call us and let us know they're out there. We'll go out to their car with the application and with the ballot. They can vote their ballot in the car. And if they choose to do so, they can get out of their car and drop it in the drop box. If they want to take it home with them and vote it, then they can mail it back to us. But then another confusion also is registering. Uh, for some reason, it's going around, and Dennis Parrott texted me yesterday, and he said, Debbie, I'm getting this question. And they think that they have to uh, re-register 
to get a ballot. That's not the case. If you're a registered voter and you call us and request that ballot, you will receive one. You do not re-register no, re to get a ballot. Anything else? Don't drink and drive, don't text and drive. I'm done. <laughs> All right, Miss Boone. I don't have anything, but that is what I heard. Too. Everybody seems to think that I've talked to that they're going to get a ballot in the mail. So that's what we have to stress is they have to go online and ask for that ballot to come in the mail. Right. They right. can go online to the Secretary of State's portal, which is GoVoteKY.com. Okay. And click on Absentee Ballot Request. Okay. And and I'm sure that's probably on your website, yes. how to go through and do all that? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can go to our site to get to there. Or they can, if they don't have a computer, again, they can call us at 270-765-6762, and we'll get them that application and then send them a ballot. Okay. So that's the only way. No precincts will be open. No, well, okay. Um, June the 20th, no precincts. On June the 23rd, uh, what we will have here is drive-through voting. So you'll be driving through. So I want to stress that you need to vote by absentee before that date because we will have them uh, lined up to do that if they choose to come here on June the 23rd. Their best bet is to call us or go on that portal and request one or come here from June the 1st to June the 22nd and we'll take care of them that way. So therefore, on um, June the 23rd, we will not have that many more uh, left to vote. Will they actually be using a voting machine then on June 23rd when they come through? No, no. They'll just still be, paper. That's exactly right. And they'll we'll have two drop boxes and they'll drop okay. them in the drop box. Okay. So the last day the request one would be like June the 15th if you went online? June the 15th for a mailed ballot. That's the last day because we have to have time to mail that out and for them to mail it back if they choose to. And they're, I'm glad you said that because, um, of course, June the 23rd is the date. So the tallying that we do that night will not be the true tallying. Okay, we're only going to at 6 p.m., will announce all the um, votes, the count, vote counts. But if your ballot is postmarked June the 23rd or before, and we receive it by June the 27th, it will still be counted. So you will not have a true count come June, June the 23rd. And then the certification, uh, to the Secretary of State, we have to have that in by June the 30th. So I guess it's a close race, don't celebrate. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Not too hard anyway, Doug. Yeah. Maybe we could set them up at Lowe's and we could have voted down there and had no <laughs> money. Lowe's right. stays packed when I drive by there going to the post office. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dunn. I had no other judge, thank you. Okay. Mr. Easter. I don't have anything, Judge. All right, Mr. King. Um, Mr. Ronnie Goodman. No. Mr. Thompson. I just urge every citizen to do what it takes to vote. Right. Mr. Wiseman. Uh, I have nothing good. Anything from your office, Ms. Sullivan? No, thank you. Ms. Sullivan, anything else from you? I believe we're covered it. All right. I'd remind everybody that the next meeting of Hardin County Fiscal Court is on the 9th of June. On that day, we'll have second reading of the ordinance uh, that we had first reading today for regarding uh, the mandatory storage and collection and processing of solid waste. And we'll also have second reading of our next year's budget schedule for that day. And if there's nothing else to come before us, a motion would be in order for us to adjourn then. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Clem, second by Mr. Wiseman. If there's no objection, Hearing none, we stand adjourned.